Hey everyone, welcome to part one of the DIY photo frame with Arduino. Now in this section, we'll be talking about the hardware we'll be using at a high level, and then we will discuss the connections we will need to connect the Arduino to the hardware we have. You will learn a lot about these components in a bit more detail, and by the end of it, you will have all the connections you need to start programming on the Arduino to get your DIY photo frame up and running. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, let's get started talking about hardware. The first thing we will need is the brain of the operation, and that is the Arduino Nano. Now, these small devices, as we talked about in a previous series, pack a punch, and it has all of the power and the connections we need to, to do our DIY photo frame project. So make sure you have an Arduino Nano, and I'm going to assume at this point you already went and watched the Arduino series where you learned how to program with the Arduino, and we can actually write code on this device. So we're not gonna talk about setting up Arduino from scratch, just make sure you have the Arduino Nano at hand and the appropriate connection. Now mine does use USB-C, and I just have that cable to connect to this Arduino Nano. Now some versions of the Arduino Nano do do have older versions of USB-C, that is fine. Just make sure you have the appropriate connection when you are using your Arduino Nano. On top of the Arduino Nano, we'll be using a 1.8 inch display. So this is an LCD display. This is a really nice module to, to program with the Arduino and even other microcontrollers such as the Raspberry Pi because it is programmed through the SPI interface. So it's a really common interface we can use with such devices such as the Arduino Nano very seamlessly. And it has all of the pins we need to be able to set it up. Now on top of that, what this specific LCD screen has is that it has an SD import. So this is the most important thing on the screen where we can actually input external images onto this screen from this SD from this SD port right here. Now a lot of these screens do have SPI connections, but they don't have this SD input right here as you see. So make sure you get a screen like this that has that SD input so we can save images onto an SD card and program it onto the screen with that input. So this is the type of screen we'll be using today. 1.8 inch, really small, and it has some nice vibrant colors. So that's what we'll be using in terms of the screen. Now we just talked about SD input. So of course, to use an SD input, you will need the SD card adapter and an SD card. So this is just the, the components I'll be using to do that. These will go into our computer to where we can save images onto these onto this device and the adapter will go into the to the screen and we'll be able to view those images with some programming now in order to use an sd card on your computer you need some sd card adapter so i have this little adapter here where you can insert an sd card and this other end can go into your computer so just make sure you have some way to interface for the sd card onto your personal computer so you can actually save images onto the sd card now on top of those, we have a little more components here, which I'll talk about. So as you know, with all these projects, you will need some jumper wires. So here's some jumper wires. These will just allow us to make the connections from the pins on the screen to the Arduino and some other components we'll be using as well. So I'm just going to be using female to male jumper wires and male to male jumper wires. So just make sure you have a common set of jumper wires up to this point. I'm assuming if you've done Arduino projects, you probably have these at hand some of the most essential components you need when you are programming any Arduino projects are jumper wires of all sorts, okay? Now on top of the jumper wires, we'll be using this MB102. This is a breadboard power supply or just a regular power supply. So what this module allows us to do is once we are done programming the, the Arduino from our computer, we can actually detach this and plug this into an external power source that is separate from our computer that can keep the Arduino on regardless of the power from our computer. So it allows our DIY photo frame to be its own standalone application that no longer needs a cable connection to our computer. So we'll be using this MB102 power supply and then we'll be using a rechargeable battery pack and this rechargeable battery pack will be inserted into the MB102 and this is what will power our Arduino in the end. So this is really important if you want to optionally make your DIY photo frame a standalone photo frame that you don't have to keep connected to your computer. So that will be pretty cool. And last but not least, I actually forgot to talk about this. We just need a breadboard of some sort. So here's the breadboard. I'm just using an 830 point breadboard, kind of overkill. You can use a 400 point breadboard that just allows us to organize the connections for our project and just make it a little cleaner and more organized for us to work with. 
So now that we have all the components that we, we need, let's discuss the connections we need to the Arduino and the board to actually get the board up and running. Okay, so now that we have our hardware components in order, we can go ahead and make our connections. So the connections we want to make are exactly as you see in this fritzing diagram. And go ahead and insert your Arduino Nano and your LCD screen into the breadboard and just go ahead and take 12 jumper wires. So first we have eight jumper wires from the bottom of this screen. And you can go ahead and insert the eight pins on the bottom of the screen into the breadboard and just make those eight connections from the jumper wires to the Arduino Nano. And these are the TFT lines. So these lines, once you make those connections, will enable you to, to program the screen, show colors, show text, and show shapes on the screen as you like. So those are the, that's the simplest way, the simplest connection we need to actually program the screen. Once you have those eight connections, you can then do these four remaining connections on the top, and these are for the SD card line. So these connections allow you to display images from the SD card onto the screen. What you'll notice about these four pins here is that they're not soldered like the eight pins on the bottom. So what we'll do here instead is we will just insert four male jumper wires on this end. And what's nice about these screens is that these pins are actually quite snug. So you can go ahead and just push those male jumper wires into those pins there and they should fit pretty tightly enough to actually hold themselves in place without popping out. If you are good at soldering, you have soldering experience, you can actually optionally just solder a four pin header if you like to, to make the connection more secure and robust. You do not have to solder for this project. So if you are a beginner and if, if you've never soldered before, you do not have to. It just makes it easier for you to make those connections and make that kind of connection more secure and less likely to fall off. But from my experience, these screens are tight enough where it's typically not an issue and you could read from the SD card fine simply by inserting four male jumper wires on those pins. So these are the connections and this is how they look from a fritzing diagram. So I hope they're clear and obviously a lot of wires here. So take your time to make those connections because if you mess up one of them, the screen is not going to show the images accordingly. Now on top of the fritzing diagram, I know even that can be a bit overwhelming. So I went ahead and made a summary of all of the connections you need. And those are the same connections you saw on the fritzing diagram. It's just written here in words. So if you're confused or all of those lines in colors of those lines are overwhelming, you can go ahead and just make the connections as you see here. So on the left side, we have the pins on the screen. So we have the eight from the TFT line. So that was the bottom row that we just saw. And on the right, we have the pins on the Arduino Nano. Everything is labeled respectively. So whatever pin you see here, you will see on the screen. And whatever pin you see here, you'll see that same pin labeled on the Arduino Nano. And then we have the four from the SD lines on the bottom here. So this is just written in words, just so you guys who are confused by the image can use this as better guidance if you are still confused on the connections from that diagram. Okay, so last thing before I end this lesson, I just wanted to show you how it looks physically. Now you can see why I didn't show you this at first when I wanted to show you the connections because obviously it's a bit overwhelming to point with my fingers to it and showing you each connection one by one. But this is how it looks from my point of view right now. You can see I inserted those male jumper wires. They're pretty snug here, a little loose, and that's why I mentioned that you can optionally solder a four pin header there if you like. And on the bottom here, you see we use male jumper wires as well. That is male to male. And you see, I just went ahead and inserted those as well. And that's how everything looks. So very similar to the fritzing diagram. And once your setup is done, you should have all the jumper wire connections you need to get this screen up and running. So now that we have that, I'll meet you in the next section where we'll talk about preparing our images and loading them into the SD card for our DIY photo frame. I will see you there.